everybody, I'm Sarah, this is Tally, and we are Recorder, Recorder Players. Players! So I am here today in Brooklyn, New York City with Tally Rubinstone. Hi everyone. Tally is um, a jazz recorder player and singer and composer and is doing really unique things on the recorder scene. So while I'm over here in the States, I took this opportunity to come to Brooklyn and ask you a bunch of questions. Great. Could you tell me how you became a recorder player? Uh, it's funny that it's, this question comes up a lot. Yeah, I think the real question for me is why did I keep playing the recorder, yeah. you know? I guess the mystery is why don't everyone <laughs> still play recorder? Because yeah. it's so great. So yeah. I didn't really make that choice. It just like it was great and I didn't want to stop and I had no reason to stop. <laughs> and I had the best teacher I could ask for. Her name is Baraka Kol. Baroque, Renaissance music, all the fundamentals. And uh, for many years I was studying with her. Mm -hmm. And also she helped me like uh, connect to my own artistic expression, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, like slowly, slowly developing my, my own statement. And later on I continued to study classical music in Tel Aviv Academy mm -hmm. for music. And at that time I kind of started having like uh, these thoughts like to try something else like to be a sinner in the recorder <laughs> world <laughs> so after that I went to Limon school mm -hmm. which is a jazz and contemporary school uh, in Israel next to Tel Aviv also like totally blew my mind and changed my approach to music and started writing, improvising, singing, like <laughs> all these things I've never done before. Wow. And and then I went to eventually to Berkeley College in okay. Boston. Because that's not the most obvious choice for a recorder player. I guess uh, around the time I went to Ramon school, mm -hmm. um, it was like the same time I was questioning, should I be a musician? Because I was like, I skipped this part, but for a brief moment I studied math. Because oh. I thought that's like a real profession. Math, I don't know. I'm not sure it's more real than music. They're both <laughs> somewhere like kind of obscure. I just realized like I have to take a break and think about what do I want to do. And my break was going to study jazz at Rimon School. So it was supposed to be my time off until <laughs> I get serious again. <laughs> And it's just like, again, like it's kind of stuck with me. I'm sure everyone asks you these annoying questions all the time. Why did you stick with the recorder if you're doing jazz? And I'm sure people were like, oh, why don't you play saxophone? Like <laughs> I mean, the recorder is like uh, first nature to me, you know? Mm -hmm. I think I speak it better than I speak <laughs> in general. <laughs> it's so natural. Um, so yeah, to study something else at that point would be like so crazy. And there's no sound that I envision that I prefer to play it with like mm -hmm. not only in jazz but at some point before I transferred mm -hmm. I played um, I tried to play the oboe <laughs> because <laughs> in, in my high school they needed an oboe for the orchestra yeah so actually when I got in the school I did my audition for to get in and I, as I finished they were saying so we heard you want to play oboe <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like, uh, I think that's why I got it like they needed an oboe it's so hard mm -hmm. you're like like so yeah. much pressure for me physically it was like draining so I always went back to the recorder to play the same piece that I really like yeah just like oh. so how, how was that how were you received there um, uh, hmm. sometimes with a lot of suspicion mm. <laughs> and when you have to like write in the system what's your instrument mm -hmm. then they don't have recorders so it's flute so sometimes okay. I would come to some ensemble and they think uh, I'm gonna play some woodwind or flute yeah. or something and I take out the recorder. <laughs> Usually they try to hide their surprise but there was one teacher who just stared at me <laughs> and was like, what is that? Like, <laughs> you know, no shame, you know, because it was like this smooth jazz ensemble that the recorder completely not a part of their regular instrumentation. Yeah. And then I always had to play to prove that this can be done, like, it's, mm -hmm. it's okay, it's just an instrument. Yeah. And it always, like, broke the ice, the actual playing. And then Amazing. it was fun, it was great. But they've yeah. always been really great once, like, once 
we started playing. Yeah. That always makes sense. Oh, that's great. There's like yeah. loads of jazz musicians everywhere on the East Coast now who are like, recorder. Yeah, plus like a lot of teachers that I studied with in Israel as well told me, you know, I used to hate this instrument because all they remember is like, first graders trying to produce a sound and that and they're saying to me wow we really like it now now we hear it like or like in some compositions that they have in mind they want to write for a recorder it's nice to feel that that people open up like people understand why i love the sense the sound mm -hmm. they can relate to it as well yeah. oh. what is that it's <laughs> it's a, a fire truck coming back <laughs> That's such a scary sound. Um, so what was that asking? Oh, yeah. Are there like challenges blending into a traditional jazz sound? Volume, <laughs> obviously, yes. Mm. Um, I have to use a microphone for any situation, even if it's just me and a piano, you know, mm -hmm. it still doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I really, when I have a show and it's even very minimalistic, I have to convince people that it can't work with modern instruments. Okay. So I always use a microphone. And also, <clears throat> I find that some like tiny reverb helps to like make the sound a bit more mm. like modern, or it just doesn't end so quickly. Yeah. It's like I mean, also in classical music, you would play like in a chapel or somewhere that helps the sound reverberate. Yeah. So I do the same with the microphone. In terms of the style, like the articulation and things like that, and the phrasing, of course, there's a lot of work, mm -hmm. but. Yeah, it's more like to learn the language in general. Probably use much more vibrato than I used to, I think. And probably I do some like slides, things that are related to the sound that just intuitively yeah. happen. I also have to say, I listened to your album with Tal. Mm -hmm. This is a piece with really delicate piano playing and I think you were playing soprano recorder or something. Mm -hmm. it just it was so in tune, <laughs> super high and soft and not, I mean, I know what a nightmare that is to tune. It's funny, like, the less I think about tuning, the more I'm in tune, I think. I remember there was, like, a short period of time when I was in Rimon. I started getting really, like, nervous about tuning. But then I just stopped caring about it. And I'm not even sure if I'm in tune all the time. I don't know, like... <laughs> I don't care so much, I just care that it sounds nice, either that it's really really in tune or sometimes I like, I keep the, the phrase that is out of tune because it's nice, it has some like, kind mm. of like a feeling of a difficulty inside, I like it as a color. Yeah. I mean I hear it, but it's like a choice. Um, I guess you improvise as well? Yeah. 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 That was a stupid question. <laughs> it's not stupid, it took me a long time to... To say it so naturally, yeah. Mm. Yeah. How am I supposed to... What a, like, yeah. it was such a big question, I couldn't even articulate the question. Yeah. <laughs> it looked for, to me like magic when other people do it. Mm. So there was a, a lot of technical training, a lot of mental training, and a lot of experience. And do you have any tips for people who are just starting with improvisation? For me, the best thing is to have a teacher <laughs> because it just gives a frame, a name, like techniques, you can build it like slowly. There's another thing that helps that anyone can do alone, which is to take some solo and it's not easy. I did it a lot though and transcribe it. Some people do it by writing it down, like the notes that you're listening to it. There are even like um, software that can slow it down for you and then you can uh, take your yeah. time and check, like compare with the recorder. Or some people prefer to do it by heart, just listening and copying. Yeah, it just gets into your brain, like your you dream about it, you know, <laughs> and it just gets into your fingers from that. And you also have videos on YouTube. Yeah, now, I have this web series. It's called Tally Jumps New York, in which I go play the recorder in different jam sessions in New York like uh, jazz or blues or rock or whatever, funk. I developed this habit of, especially in my first years in New York, of just going everywhere and, and meeting other musicians and exploring the music by like trying it out <laughs> yeah. with the recorder. Me and my good friend, who is an amazing filmmaker, Dol Pikelny, we had an idea and we <laughs> said, why not make it into a web series with like, that we get a peek into your life and there's some like embarrassing moments. <laughs> and we love it and we're trying to do another hopefully another season let's see so, <laughs> should we play something let's do it <laughs>
so we are gonna play we're gonna play some brazilian jazz i do not have much experience in this so i'm gonna do my best <laughs> for Tali's music and albums and web series and everything um, as always you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on my face down here down here is the team recorder patreon where you can choose to support the channel and up here somewhere is my video introducing improvisation because I'm sure you all want to get into it now <laughs> thanks for watching and have a great day bye bye bye